There's very few things as stressful as saying, you now have a life-threatening disease and probably it's gonna kill you. I was in rehab when I found out I was uh, HIV positive. I had both, hep C and HIV. And um, I thought my world was gonna crumble. I found out February 14th, 1997, that I was HIV positive. I was panicked. I didn't know which way to go. I was a benefits analyst for many, many years, and I worked at several health plans. I was in my place for 20 years. My landlady died. And then in a really aggressive judicial process, I found myself locked out of my place. I ended up out on the street after a few months because I exhausted my, my friend's couches. I came here in 1968. I was 11 years old from El Salvador. There was very few immigrants, so there was no such thing as English as second language class. So it forced me to learn English. I wanted to find out about the SAT tests. I asked my high school counselor. And she said, oh, don't worry about it. You know, you, you being here is a fluke. That's what she told me. You know, I'm a Latina, you know, it's the early 70s. When I took the SAT test, I scored 1400, which is, I put me in the top one percentile of the nation. You could be really bright and still do stupid things. My husband sold drugs. He used drugs too, and then I used drugs. And after he died, I started really using more drugs, and which is how I got um, HIV infected. When someone has a life-threatening illness, it triggers the fight or flight response, and the fight or flight response lowers immunity. And so there's a vicious circle that happens. When I found out that my T cells were around 300, and dropping, and there was not a lot that was being done to address it, I started to panic. It was tough living day to day with all the stress and not knowing what to do because we're not taught co coping skills. stress level goes up, which causes immune system to go down. Uh, so anything that the person can do that interrupts that and provides um, a sense of relaxation and safety will be immune enhancing. TM is a great example of that. I came to Transcendental Meditation through a flyer that the San Francisco Foundation posted. I felt the serenity, the peace that I hadn't had before. The stress was slowly leaving me. And the more I did it, the less stress I felt. When I started meditating, my body began to fight back. I'm currently over 1,200 T cells and I feel great. Three months into me meditating consistently, twice a day, I went from having like 215 T cells to 358, which is like 125 surge in like three months time, which I had not had ever in my time uh, living with HIV. And the only thing that had changed in my life was the fact that I was meditating. And, and since I've been meditating, it's been consistently going up. When someone feels empowered, it also helps immune function. And so to have a technique in your own toolkit, like TM, that you can implement on your own is what we call self-empowering, and that's a huge piece. Who would have thought 20 minutes in the morning and 20 minutes in the afternoon was gonna have such, such a profound effect of benefit in my life, you know? I used to walk with a cane. And since I started meditating, I no longer use a cane. I like walking, you know, and I, I walk fast. I don't, you know, I'm, you know, former New Yorker, man. You know, New York, <laughs> if you stroll, you get trampled. 
I'm actually gonna have a quinceanera for my HIV. I'm gonna celebrate 15 years of being HIV positive. You could have a full, very rich life, even though you're HIV positive. It's no longer the death sentence that it used to be. I had some of my most stoic, always incredibly supportive mentors through the AIDS Foundation, and I wanted to emulate that for other people and be able to give back. And, and I started trying to reach people and teach them about HIV. Hi, Michael. <laughs> How you doing? We're great friends. We volunteer together. In the name of Hep C prevention and, and HIV. HIV, definitely. 